In this video, we're going to take a look at adjusting the white balance in the basic panel of the develop module. Here it is, it's this big eyedropper, and if I click on it, I can pick it up. Now you'll notice that when I get into the image, we've got this grid, and this is called a loop. And this is here to help me to be a little bit more precise on where I click. The cross in the middle here is the point immediately under the tip of the eyedropper. And at the bottom here, you can see the RGB values displayed. Now, while I'm hovering over the image, I'm not clicking, but if I hover, if you look at the navigator panel, it di displays a preview of the corrected white balance, should I click. You can see it changing colours as I move around the image. And it just gives you a little bit of a visual indicator. OK, now let's look at the toolbar. And we can see down here, the first thing I want to look at is show loop. So if I take that off, then obviously the loop disappears. So if that is something that you find distracting, then you can switch it off. I find it useful, so I keep that switched on. Now we've got the scale. Now what the scale slider does is it changes the little grids that's inside the loop. So you can make it smaller to get more accurate or bigger. And then lastly, we've got auto dismiss. And I tend to leave this set with no ticking. I'll show you why. If I put a tick in auto dismiss, what we get is one click. And that's it. It switches the tool off and redocks it and puts it to bed. Well, I prefer a little bit more flexibility. I prefer to have more clicks to be able to get the white balance that I require. I'll just reset that. And I'll activate the tool again and I'll switch off auto dismiss. So let's see it in action. So I'm going to hover over somewhere that I think should be neutral. Let's try here. I'll look at the preview and I think that looks pretty good. And I'll click. And if I'm not happy, I can move around again and I can just click again. And I'm happy with that. Now, once I've finished, I can close down the tool by clicking back in the dock and redocking the tool. Now, do we have to use the eyedropper? Well, no, there are a couple of other ways that we can change the white balance. And one of them is through some presets. And if I click this little triangle here, we can see because this is a JPEG image, we only have three options. We've got a shot, an auto option and a custom option. Now, if this was a raw file, we'd have more. And if we come back up now to these custom presets, we'll see that we've got more. We've got a daylight and a cloudy and a shade, a tungsten. All these are what you will see in your camera. Now, finally, if we want to do it, we can do it manually. We can drag the sliders to set a custom white balance. Well, that draws to a close. I'll look at correcting white balance in the basic panel of the develop module in Lightroom. I hope it was useful.